Okay, so uh, let's continue with the uh, convergence analysis for the cut marks method. And uh, I will only do that in the fully discrete case, uh, which is much simpler than the semi-discrete case, which I uh, looked at uh, in the previous section. Uh, so uh, we assume that all our measurements are in uh, a finite dimensional, and that's going to make uh, things much simpler, as you would see. Um, we will prove a convergence theorem that is surprisingly general. And, uh, well, let's have it. So I will prove the following theorem. Uh, let RK let RK and GK as above for, for K from 0 to P minus 1. So we have operators. Uh, RK from some image space X into data spaces YK. And uh, we're trying to solve, we're trying to find um, a, a solution of RKF equals GK for all K. So, so from for K from 0 to P minus 1. Okay, uh, now uh, assume that uh, CK is uh, a um, positive uh, definite operator from X to X. So uh, I'm writing continuous here, but since I assume that uh, this is the fully discrete case, then CK is just a positive definite matrix. And for CK, we assume that CK is larger than RK star RK in the following sense. Uh, the scalar product of CKX and X should be larger than RK star RKX and X for all X in X. Okay, and that would probably, for example, uh, be true if all singular values of CK are larger than, the, than all sing singular values of RK. And uh, typically, we think of CK as a very simple matrix. And uh, very often, like in the CT case, this is taken as a diagonal matrix. OK, uh, now, as usual, our operator R is uh, uh, assembled by the, uh, by the, um, by the um, single operators R0 to Rp minus 1. G is the vector of all. Um, of all measurements. So think of R as a large matrix in the discrete case where the single matrices are stacked on top of each other, same for the vector G. Then what we're trying to find is a vector F such that RF is equal to G. We assume that RF equals G is consistent, uh, which means that there is actually a solution of the, um, uh, um, of the equation RF equals g. This is not necessary and this is actually not necessary and um, it's thinking of the uh, idea that uh, r should be um, could be overdetermined. Um, it's not clear why this is here but um, you can do without it but again that makes our proof much simpler. Uh, we choose an omega fixed between 0 and 2. And uh, we, uh, um, we choose an initial value, an initial, um, initial function, initial value for our sequence fk, f0 in x. So that should be an, um, an, an image. That's an image space. And we define our sequence fl uh, by, the, by, by a modified Kutchmarz algorithm. So fl plus 1 should be fl plus omega rk star. And usually we had here something like rk, rk star to the minus one. And I replace that with, with ck to the minus one. And thinking of the idea that ck might be a diagonal matrix, then uh, this is much simpler. It's a real simplification of the normal Kutchmarz procedure. And apply that to gk minus rk fl. And of course, k must be chosen uh, with, for each L. And we simply choose the rule that I started with. So uh, we choose k as L modulo p. OK, so uh, now this defines our sequence of Kutchmarz vectors. And um, 
we uh, uh, assume additionally that uh, our initial value, the, uh, the uh, initial value for the sequence is in the orthogonal space of the kernel of R. And for example, F0 uh, equal to zero would be fine. In that case, uh, then the uh, sweeps, so the iterates that I, re that I receive after the else sweep will, co will converge towards the minimum norm solution of Rf equals G, so that's R plus G, for uh, L to infinity. Okay, so FL times P, remember, so that's F0, FP, F2, P, and so on. These are the iterates I get after the else sweep, after using all the data once, twice, and so on. Okay, um, again, uh, this is assumed that X and YK are finite dimensional. This is uh, something that I already announced. So I'm proving it for the simple case. Now um, let f plus the um, minimum norm solution of r f equals g. So f plus is r plus g, and uh, that means it is a least squares solution. But uh, since uh, the uh, the uh, equation has a solution. Um, in, in every uh, least square solution is also a solution of the equation. So we have that Rf plus is G. And uh, since it's a minimum norm solution, it must be in the range of R adjoint or the kernel of R perp. Okay, um, so uh, Fp, as I said, is the approximation after one sweep using all data once, Flp, that's what, uh, that's uh, the approximation that we get after L sweeps and we prove that FLP converges to F plus. Okay, uh, why does that maybe make sense to take uh, these sweeps? Well, to compute one Landweber step, uh, we'll have to apply R zero and R to RP minus one and R zero to RP minus one adjoint once. So uh, for one Kutchmart's sweep, oh, we have to do exactly the same, right? In every single step, we have to apply one of the RKs and one of the RK stars. This is hopefully simple if CK is a simple operator. So um, this, uh, so uh, we have the same numerical effort for one sweep as for one Landweber step. Um, only um, in, uh, but of course, in Landweber step, we get one iterate. And here, this is already the pth iterate, and we have the same numerical effort for these. Okay. Um, now we define the error EL as FLP minus F plus. So that's the difference between uh, the else um, approximation, approximation after the else sweep. Uh, and uh, f um, uh, and f plus, and we show that e l converges to zero, which completes our proof. Okay, um, now defining q k as i minus omega r k star c k to the minus one r k for each single k. Then uh, obviously this is an operator from image space x to image space x. And uh, choosing k as L modulo p, we have that qk fl minus f plus. That's by definition of qk, that's the same F as fl minus f plus minus omega rk star ck to the minus one rk fl. And then I would have something like rk f plus over here. Oops. rk f plus. But uh, since uh, F plus is a solution of Rf equals G, then Rk F plus is nothing but Gk. And uh, if you look at this closely, then this is minus F plus is here, and the rest is just the definition of Fl plus one. So we have that Qk times Fl minus F plus is Fl plus one minus F plus. Okay, um, now applying this for maybe for L equals zero, we have that uh, Q0 times F0 minus F plus is F1 minus F plus, okay? 
So that means that Q1, Q0 times F0 minus F plus, that's Q1 uh, times F1 minus F plus, and that's, again, according to the rule over here, that's nothing by F2 minus F plus. Okay, so applying QP minus 1 and Q0, which I call Q, to, the, to uh, F0 minus F plus gives us, well, FP minus F plus, right? Exactly the same thing. Uh, so we have E1 is Q times E0, or for L arbitrary, we have EL plus 1 is Q times EL. And uh, that implies that uh, the norm of EL is smaller than the norm of Q to the L, matrix norm to the L times the norm of E0. E Did I say E null? It's E0, E null. I don't, I don't care. And um, now, if we can show that the norm of Q is smaller than 1, then we're done because then EL converges to 0 for L to infinity. Okay, so uh, that's what we'd like to show. We'd, uh, we'd like to show that the norm of Q, so the norm of this product over here is smaller than 1 in the matrix norm. However, there's a problem because that's never going to be true. I assumed that QF, uh, that um, RF equals G is solvable, but I didn't assume that it's either injective or surjective. So uh, take any U which is in the kernel of R. Well, if it's in the kernel of R, uh, the kernel R uh, consists of uh, the single operators RK. So uh, if U is in the kernel of R, then U is also in the kernel of RK. And uh, that means that uh, QK times U is U. So let's look at the definition over here. If U is in the kernel of RK, then uh, this is going to be zero and all that's left is the i over here. So we have that QKU is U. Uh, and um, since that's true for all K, we also have that QU is U. And uh, that of course immediately means that uh, the matrix norm of Q is larger or equal to one. Okay, so uh, that's bad. Um, because the norm of Q is not smaller than 1. Actually, it's also not larger than 1, but it's 1 if uh, the kernel is, um, if you, uh, if the kernel is not vanishing. Okay, um, now we can at least take from that that the kernel of R is an invariant subspace of Q. So Q restricted to the kernel of R is the identity. Now, um, on the other hand, uh, QK is self-adjoint. Let's check that. Yeah, this is the definition, right? If I turn it around, same thing comes up. So, and uh, we have that CK to the minus 1 is, uh, CK is positive definite. So uh, it's self-adjoint, and that means that also CK to the minus 1 is self-adjoint. Uh, so... Um, QK is definitely self-adjoint. And uh, Q star can be written as Q0 times Q, Q0 adjoint times QP minus 1 adjoint. But since QK is self-adjoint, it's just Q0, the product of Q0 up to Q, uh, Q, QP minus 1. And that's, that's just inserting the definition of Q. OK, um, now um, we already saw that um, Q restricted to the kernel of R is I, but if I just turn this over here around, same thing happens. So also Q uh, the adjoint of Q restricted to the kernel of R is again the unit operator. Okay, um, now assume that X is in the kernel of R. Uh, y is in the range of R adjoint, which is the same as the kernel of R perp. Um, and uh, let's compute the scalar product of X times QY. Now, this is the same as uh, Q star X and Y, but uh, X is in the kernel of R, and we already saw that uh, the, uh, on, on the kernel, Q star is just the identity, so this is the same of X and Y. 
And now x is in the kernel of r, y is in the kernel of r pulp, so this is zero. Since this is true for all x in the kernel of r, we have that qy is in the kernel of r perp. So that means that if uh, that uh, the kernel of r perp is an invariant subspace under q of q, should add this here, uh, because if I take any element in uh, the kernel of R perp, then uh, we find that QY is also in the kernel of R perp. Okay, uh, remember that F0 is in the kernel, oh, yeah, I think I stopped there. Uh, so remember that F0 was selected in the kernel of R perp, so uh, that means that F0 minus F plus that's also in the kernel of R perp. And uh, it should, shouldn't be a QK. Yeah. Okay. Q times F0 minus F0 minus F plus is in the kernel of R perp. And then Q times F0 minus F plus is also in the kernel of R perp. So, um, um, the uh, Q is always applied to elements of kernel of R perp. So it absolutely makes sense to restrict. So it absolutely makes sense to restrict our operator Q, Q to the kernel of R perp. First of all, it's, this is an invariant subspace, so uh, this absolutely makes sense. And also it makes sense in, uh, um, in our proof because we want to apply this to F0 minus F plus, which is E0 and which is in the kernel of R. Okay, uh, now we've restricted uh, Q to the kernel of R perp, and we wish to show that now Q, the restriction of Q, to that kernel of R perp is smaller than one. Okay, um, to compute the norm of Q, we have to, uh, um, we have to find the um, supremum of norm QF for any F with norm F equal to one. So take any F uh, with uh, the property that the norm of F is one. Okay, and now let's compute QKF, uh, Euclidean norm squared. So uh, inserting the definition of QK, this is nothing but F minus omega RK star CK to the minus one RKF to norm squared. Okay, um, now I write this as the scalar product with itself and um, from, um, uh, Ausklammer? I don't know. And, and um, write it uh, in the following way. So this is the scalar product of F and F minus two times the uh, scalar product of omega times RK star CK to the minus one RKF, scalar product with F plus omega squared times uh, this vector over here, scalar product with itself. And that's exactly what we have here. Uh, now um, I can uh, take the RKA joint and move it to the other side over here. Then uh, this becomes CK to the minus one RKF uh, scalar product with RKF. Okay, that's good. Um, I can also take this RKA joint over here and move it to the front. Then this is the same as RK, RKA joint, CK to the minus one RKF ck to the minus one rkf. Okay, so this is rk, rk adjoint applied to the same vector, applied to ck to the minus one rkf. And here, uh, there should be closing bracket. So um, this rk, uh, rk, uh, rk, rk adjoint some vector u, scalar product with u. And um, that was exactly what I wanted from CK. Just go back to that. We had that um, 
Yeah, CKX and X should be larger than RK adjoint RKX and X. So what we have here is smaller or equal to CK to the CK to the minus one RKF, CK to the minus one RKF. And uh, now this over here cancels. So this is exactly the same as RKF, CK to the minus one RKF. That's exactly what we already have over here. And now taking everything together, we have that this is the norm of F squared. This is one over here, minus omega times two minus omega. So that's uh, two minus two omega plus omega squared. So I can write it in the following way. And uh, since omega is between zero and two, this over here is larger than zero. And what is left is just the scalar product of RKF and CK to the minus one RKF. Okay, uh, now, so we see that um, the norm of F, uh, we see that norm of QKF is smaller than the norm of F if this over here doesn't vanish. Okay, uh, we know that it's uh, that this one is negative anyway because CK to the minus one is positive definite. So this is larger than zero. Here something is sub subtracted, so it definitely becomes smaller or equal, but uh, we don't know it might be zero. Okay. Of course, we want it to be to get really smaller. Uh, so uh, we want this to be non-zero. So we want that CKF, CK to the minus one, RKF is not equal to zero. Okay, since, as I said, CK is positive definitely, positive definite, um, this one is zero exactly if RKF is equal to zero. Okay, uh, now assume the following. Assume that f is in the kernel of R perp and assume that the norm of f is one. So um, in particular, f is not zero. So um, if f is not in the kernel, uh, then uh, there is one k that RKF is not equal to zero. There's at least one k where f is not in the kernel of RK. Okay, let k now be the smallest indexed with this property. So uh, we have that r0f and rk minus 1f is equal to 0. And uh, q0, um, which implies that q0f and qk minus 1f is f, because if f is in, uh, in the kernel of rk, then uh, rk is uh, the identity. RKF is uh, is F, as we just proved. Uh, so, uh, uh, excuse me, QK, QKF is uh, is F, as we said. So, uh, if um, R zero F to R K minus one F is zero, we have that Q zero F is F, and up to Q K minus one, all these are F. And uh, now, um, from our proposition, RKF is not equal to zero. Okay, now let's look at what QK times Q0F is. Now this is uh, Q0F, uh, since Q0F is F, um, that this is F, Q1, Q0F is F and so on. So this is nothing but uh, QK times F because uh, QJF is F for all the other QKs that QJs that appear over here. So this is the same as norm of QKF, and this is now smaller than the norm of F because RKF is not equal to zero. Okay, that means uh, that for this QK, uh, um, um, the, for this QK, um, the norm actually gets smaller. Now let's look at the norm of QF. Um, and uh, so we now apply all the Qs, Qp minus one to Q zero over here. Then we can do the same analysis as before. And when we get to Qk, uh, this actually gets smaller once and it can never get bigger again because we already saw that Q, oops, Qkf can only get larger, can only get smaller, not larger. 
So uh, we have that um, when we get to the index k over here, everything gets smaller. It can't get larger again. So we definitely have that the norm of qf is smaller than the norm of f. And now we are already done because um, now uh, the maximum of norm of qf for norm f equals to one, which is nothing but the operator norm, attains its maximum in finite dimensions. So that means that the supremum of norm of qf for norm f equal to one and f in the kernel of r perp is smaller than one. And uh, that means that the operator norm of q restricted to the kernel of r perp is smaller than one. Now this is all we had to prove. Now the norm of q is smaller than one. We have that ek, which is smaller than norm of q to, uh, to the k, e0 goes to zero, and uh, that's it, right? So, um, in, in fact, f l times p goes to f plus. Okay, uh, let me remark at this point that things get much more difficult in the infinite dimensional case, so I'm uh, leaving this out here, and I will start the lecture with a lot of remarks about the Kutchmarts method.